tactics, thus failing to match the current tactics and way of competition that is ever evolving and therefore change is an inevitable in the technical management of our athletes. We have also been concerned on the kind of reception that our athletes are subjected to when they learn back. Yesterday, several athletes, including the two gold winners, chatted back to the country, but the kind of reception being accorded to them is still wanting, since even the cabinet secretary himself did not show up to receive. And it's good to note that the arrival of Faith and the other team member was at night, and we know our CS of Sports is active more at night as you consider a number of events he attends. This type of welcoming of at least reflects the general poor management and lack of motivation being accorded to the team. I therefore wish to call upon the Minister of Sports, Athletics Kenya, and National Olympics Committee to explain the following to Kenyans. One, what really happened to our team management in and if there were any prior arrangements for athletes' receptions in Nairobi. Number two, expound, and I saw Nock trying to explain some things a few weeks ago. Number two, expound on the reward scheme system and stipends given to winners for various categories. For example, in Uganda, you can see President Yoweri Kagutam Seven and Uganda government is giving at least a house, a car, and if you are not married, you are either given a wife or a husband. Why has the ministry reviewed the daily allowance from the previously ag ag agreed USD $300 to $60 per day? This was a 57-member team. If you calculate 240 USD, it comes to around 27.7 .7 million Kenyan shillings that cannot be accounted. Number four, explain the selection process of athletes and officials who went to represent Kenya in Budapest, explain why some athletes who qualified during selection did not travel, yet they were replaced, and what criteria was used for replacement. Explain why our athletes are flying on the economy class, while management and officials are using business class and first class, including joy riders. For example, I talked to the manager of Faith, Faith and on all occasions when Kenya is competing, and even Eliud Kipchoge, that their coach and management are forced to pay for their ticket of business or uh, first class to ensure they get a, a leg room and ensure they are in good shape to avoid what we call jet lag. Number four, provide the full details of contracts signed between the Ministry of Sports, Athletics Kenya, and Nike. And McHugh, the Minister of Sports on several occasions, and I want you to examine those photos he takes. He normally wears shoes of Adidas, yet we have a contract of Nike and the contract between Athletics Kenya and Olympic Committee of Kenya. Number four, expound on the training kits and grants donated by various international partners to Athletics Kenya and how it was distributed to various training levels in Kenya and the teams traveling for various competitions. And I want to urge DCI to visit some of the homes of these senior athletics officials and ministry officials. They have stuck a lot of donated kids in their homes, in their bathrooms, yet they should be given to the children, the young, the academic. You saw the, 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 the coming of the end of sports for the secondary schools. They, there are many donations that are given for training of young people, but some of the senior ministry officials and athletics Kenya officials are hiding those donated kids from many organizations that support uh, this, uh, the sports in this country. I also wish to propose the following done as part of the reforms in the management of Athletics Kenya. One, delocalize athlete services like issuance of clearance letters and visas to towns near the training camps to avoid athletes camping in Nairobi for days waiting to be served. For example, in where we come from, Nandi, we should have uh, issuance, uh, they should be issuing traveling letters for them to participate in international sports in Kapsabet, in Eldoret, in Iten, in Meru, in Kisi, so that they at least don't need to travel to Nairobi to look, look up for the clearance letters. And also we need the issue, you can see what is happening at the headquarters here in Nyayo. Our at least are forced to stay two weeks, yet they, they are supposed to prepare for the competition. Yet they come and stay here at the, at the Nyayo house waiting for the number of passports, and you have had the Minister of Interior has declared Nyaya House. Most of the economies of no drift, 
survives only on the issue of sports. And therefore, even in Iten, in Eldoret, in Nandi, we have even what we call sports tourism, where we have people like Mo Farah who come to North Rift and see and train because of the high altitude. And therefore, I want to, this is not a small matter. I can see some people travelizing and putting it on social and insulting. This is beyond, and I want to ask the minister and the Ministry of Sports to stop unnecessary sideshows of insults in social media and concentrate on fixing sports once and for all. And you know the president is very clear. If there is any corruption in the ministry, especially on this payment of allowances to athletes, and it is very sad because I have talked to a number of athletes and to protect their identities because of avoid victimization, that they were promised $300 per day, but they were ended up being paid $60. And this was a 57 team member that went to Budapest, uh, Hungary. I want to appeal, if there are any corruption within the sports ministry, the minister and the ministry must sit down and address those challenges. If they are facing any challenges as a parliament, and I want to insist this, they should bring any legislative and policy intervention to parliament to assist the growth of uh, sports in this country. And they should listen to the message of the president. The president has said there are only three things. Either you go to the jail, you go to heaven, or you leave this country. There is no option about that. And therefore, as a member and a senator of the great people of Nandi, where we pride ourselves with the people like Eliud Kipchoge and the athletes of this world, we shall not relearn fighting for justice to ensure athletes are treated with respect. They are, for example, faith in gold. I'm told the exchange rate is $145 a dollar. I'm told it is around $10 million. Why would the government come and if faith has won $10 million for gold, the government should come and reward faith again with $10 million. Why would KRA want to come and tax winnings that have been won? Yet faith and others are branded Kenya. They are the brand ambassadors of this country. Why would you tax an, an, an athlete who is running somewhere in Budapest? People are know Kenya only because when you travel across the world, when you tell people I'm coming from Kenya, they tell you you do like this. So I, I really want to appeal that the issue of sports, and I'm not saying only about athletics, even, even football even fallible, even netball. There is no problem with content creators. I have seen people trying to mislead the country. I don't have a problem with content creators. I don't have a problem with people who use TikTok. Personally, I'm on TikTok. But I don't see beyond midnight because things that are shown beyond midnight, God only and the, the God will forgive us. But the point I'm trying to say, the content creators is okay, but we must fix the traditional sports once and for all, where athletics, football, netball, uh, rugby, among others, should be looking to for the benefit of the young people in this country. And most of these young people who are in sports are hustlers, and we must protect them at all costs. With those very, very remarks, finally, I have filed these questions also with the, the clerk of the Senate, said that when the Minister of Sports appears, I would request that I file 100 questions before the, the clerk. I hope I'll be given around four to eight sittings to be able to, to grill and question the CS of sports. Although he has written a letter to me wanting to appear to come and answer, he should be aware of parliamentary procedures. Parliament cannot be directed. He should wait for him to be invited, then he can answer those questions. So I wish to rest there and say thank you for coming to this brief presser. Let us continue supporting our sportsmen and women. Let us continue welcoming them. This country has a huge potential. Let us protect our sports. Our sports is the source of pride of Kenya here locally, globally, and across uh, the world. Asante ni sana mungu wa bariki.